Cool, mate. It's good to get you on the uh, chat today. Um, just before we start, though, just so we sort of some of my viewers might not know who you are, we'd go into this thing in depth. But just like in 30 seconds or less, mate, who's Mike Chadwick? Who are you? Cool. So, um, yeah, I'm Mike Chadwick. Uh, originally Parachute Regiment, Special Forces Support Group, before being selected for the Royal Army Physical Training Corps. Um, I joined in 2007, subsequently left uh, a year ago now to take up a commission into the reserves and continue in full-time coaching uh, where I coach athletes all over the world, predominantly those who want to take their first or next step in tactical athlete development. Wicked, mate. Ah, good career you've had up until now, isn't it? Uh, before we get into that, though, I know you've, I've listened to quite a few podcasts and videos that you've done. Um, but we'll go back to the past a little bit. How sort of did you end up about this? I know you had a, a few struggles um, sort of as a child, didn't you? Um, you were sort of like the man of the house and then you sort of joined the military to support. You just want to go into a little bit more depth of like that and then sort of like why you joined the military? Yeah, so, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't call it a struggle. I mean, it'd be, it'd be very naive for me to call it that. It's predominantly what most social demographics, what the biggest social demographic makes up of the military, probably. We've all, you know, there's a lot of people who come from broken homes. It's nothing new in the military. It's, uh, But yeah, predominantly, I joined the military solely to put food on the table. There was no, there wasn't for Queen and Country. I've said this before on podcast. It wasn't for, um, you know, it was it was strictly and explicitly to put food on the table for my little sister. Um, I ended up somehow in the Paris. Um, and yeah, it just uh, hit the ground running. Eh? If you're going to go big, go as big as you can. Do you reckon that was the careers office doing? Because that's how I initially ended up in the artillery. Um, um, no, the careers office actually uh, wanted me to join the the where I was. The careers office tried to make me go to the guards. Um, I turned up to I contacted my dad, um, who was in a certain part of the part of the military, and I basically said, uh, "I'm going to join the army. Uh, this is in my last year of school. I'm joining the army. Who do I join?" <clears throat> and he said, "Well, you either join the Marines or the Paras. You, that's it. You join one of them." And I was like, "Okay, which one?" what did he both do which one didn't answer what they did he just went right if you're going to do one do the paras i was yeah, like okay sir. straight to the careers office walked in i was like right, i want to join the paras um and this big fat guardsman sat on the other end of the desk was like uh no nah, i don't think you want to do that mate you want to join the guards and i was like no my dad said i'm joining the paras so i'm gonna join the paras mate the whole way through he was like right okay you join the paras whatever and then Towards the end, he was like, oh, so you're going the guards. No room in the parish, you're going the guards. And I, so I called my dad. I was like, I'm going the guards, apparently. He went, right, wait there. And it literally, he was like, don't move. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm back home. I, I'm coming over. I was like, oh, he's sad. <laughs> and then my dad walked in, told this guardsman, that's not happening. He's joined the paris. He knows the scope. He knows the sketch. He's like, he's going to the paris. He's doing that or he's not joining. And so then, yeah, he was like, sound. So I ended up uh, joining the paris. Week one, day one depot, that hit me quite hard. And then, uh, and then yeah, just just cracked on from there, mate. But I had no idea what I was joining. I genuinely didn't. I didn't do any. Um, didn't look into it at all. Didn't YouTube anything. It was just literally joining the Paris. I did YouTube stuff, seen it, and I was like, ah, oh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, extra £200 a month. I'm in. Um, how hard can it be? <laughs> Very hard, that's what. Uh, yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, that's what... really shit. That's what happened to the careers office, though. I um, so I, I knew I always wanted to join the army. I was different to you. It was more like Queen and Country. Like Afghan was on the news, and I was like, "That's all I want to do." I was in yeah. school, and I was like, "I just want to do that." Went into the careers office. Uh, was wanted to go household cabaret originally, which I am in now. Got talked out of that. Couldn't go um, armoured for anyway because of my eyesight originally, so I couldn't do tanks because I'm pretty much colourblind. Did very well, and he come in, and he was like here's a list you can pretty much do whatever you want and the list was long it was only like 15 nearly 16 and he goes how about the artillery i was like yeah someone's mentioned to be before sounds quite good um yeah cool you signed up september here you go there's your paperwork he'd already filled it in signed me 15 just like i'm in the army okay and just yeah spend the next seven eight years in the artillery um so yeah you've got to be careful of that down the career that's what i tell everyone now is like just don't let anyone did he still do that 
Does that still exist? Is it, careers office still a, a thing? Because everything's online now, isn't it? So I, I can imagine it's a little bit easier now where someone goes, right, I want to join that. And that's it then. That's that's where you're going to go. Obviously, if you if you hit all the standards on route, then that's where you're going to go. Because, you know, back then, I'm pretty, people's reports were reliant on getting people into their regiments. Yeah. So when you walked into that careers office, they would do absolutely anything they possibly could to change your mind, wouldn't they? Yeah, and the only yeah. people in my careers office back in Liverpool was was someone from the guards and a, a Marine. Um, and I'd been told that I wasn't going to the Marines, I was going to Paris, so I went straight to the army desk and that was it. And the, 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 the Navy guy's like, oh, come, do you want to come have a chat? And I was like, no, I've got, I've got to go there. I've been told I'm going there. Um, but then this you know, fat guardsman was like, no, you go in the guards now. Yeah, because it was all done on numbers back then. I think there's like minimal careers office about now. Everything is online. Um, but a few people I speak to are joining up. They're like, there is a careers office they can go into. Um, but it's all pretty much done online now. Capita, yeah. pretty much deal with it all. Um, so it's very less likely you'll be persuaded. The only sort of things you're going to be persuaded by is family and friends. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, go, getting on to that then. Uh, day one, week one, um, I've received a few messages. And I, I do pass people on to you. Um, you being the SME with Parachute Regiment. And I've seen your story. How hard is it? And mentally because people sort of bring themselves down mentally what do people need to sort of prepare themselves for because you like you said you were a bit naive you just followed your dad wasn't really sure what was going on yeah i was i was very naive man. I, I genuinely just presumed that was the army I, I didn't think i just thought everyone who joins the army goes through this same pathway didn't have any idea i thought and then the only difference is p company at some point i'm going to go have to do a couple of tests but I mean, I'm brutally honest and I'm always open about it. And, you know, it's the, the para heads will kill me for it. But it's absolutely hideous, mate. It's, there's no question about it. From, from the week one, day one, the moment you're in it, it's horrendous. It really is. And if you're not fully invested in that and you don't fully want to be a paratrooper, the likelihood is you'll fail. And, you know, you get these, you know, I joined really naive, just left school. I always joke about it. I was doing double science on the Friday and P Company on the Monday. I thought there was no difference. I didn't know life at all. I just presume went from school to the army and that's it. So I had no life. People join it like, you know, 25, 26. I've got a lovely life behind and they've got a family, got kids. They've had a really successful career and whatever it was prior. And they go, right, I want to join the Paris then. And then all of a sudden they're, they're three weeks in going, what's the, why am I doing this? Like, this is hideous. What's the point? And, you know, and some people are there going, no, I've looked into this. I know it's going to be hard. It's going to be, it is what it is. Get through it. And, you know, and it's all, it's green on the other side. But as long as you can get your head around that, that it's going to be very, very difficult. Um, very, very physically demanding, which then has a direct correlation onto how mentally demanding it is. So first and foremost, my always, always, everything starts with physical health. Yeah. And my rationale behind that is that, the longer you, your capacity, your physical capacity holds out for, the less you need to call upon that mindset. So the way I see it is, let's take, for example, um, ease of maths, the P Company stretcher race. P Company stretcher race, five miles long. If you have to rely on your mindset one mile into that, you know, that's a long way for you to go to rely on your mindset. Or ease, I, I tell you what, let's, let's go for it. For, yeah, so one mile, so we'll utilise that. That's that's 20% that you've relied on your physical capacity. So you're going to have to rely on 80% of your mindset for the remainder of the race, of the stretcher race. That's a long way. Now, just like the body, the mind is a muscle and it has a limit. 80% is a long way to go. But if we can train physically and we can switch that and we can last for 80% of the race, so we can go four miles completely reliant on your physical ability. Then you only have one mile to rely on that mindset. That's doable. That's achievable. And the whole way through that mile, you'd be going, this is hard. Body's caving in. I'm still on the stretch. I'm still moving forward. You go, you, you've got the ability then to just crawl over the line. Now, that's not the idea. The idea of, of a tactical athlete is to be ready for anything at the end of that line. But if that's what you need to do to get through that test, then that's what you need to do. So I always, always say that everything has to start with the largest capacity of physical health first. So everything we do, we can control from a physical standpoint, ensure you're strong enough to not get injured through depot. 
because that's the most likely as you'll fail is you get injured. Breaking that down even further, most common injury is, is MTSS or uh, shin splints or um, knee dramas. We can alleviate that through ankle mobility for the shins and glute activation for the knees. So work on that. And then first and foremost is, is just ensure you don't fail. Just ensure you don't break, should I say. It's, and we can do that through simple, specific and targeted strength training. We do that. And our mindset gets pushed over to the to, to the left, you know, because it's it's we don't need to rely on it so much. But people turn up to depot and straight away they're in stretch mode, they're in the locker, and they're relying on that mindset from week one, day one. They're in the absolute turmoil. And they're like, mate, you've got another seven months of this shit. You know, it's not gonna happen. Where yeah. people people get to the end of peak coming, they're like physically, they're just like fragged. And then they're like, Yeah, but I know I've only got a few weeks left. So well, that's all right. I can do that. I can handle that. So as long as we can switch it, and that's what I always say, and it's you know, it's it's the famous David Goggins stuff where he's like, you, you can do it. You'll get through it. You know, the mind's stronger than anything, and all that good stuff. And that's really good considering David Goggins has got twenty years worth of military and arduous physical activity behind him. He can say that yeah. because he's trained really hard. Um, but you can't rely on it. You can't, you can't go in there thinking mindset will pull me through. I haven't trained, but mindset will get me through. It won't. You need to physically prepare for that shit because it is very, very physically demanding. No, that's really good. I really like that. Um, you said it in a lot better way. Just when people ask me, I'm always just like, just be fitter. The fitter you are in the army, the easier life is. doesn't matter what course you go on, it's easier. And we used to do it when I was an instructor. Third right, you look at the reports, and one of the first things you go to is their fitness score because you know their fitness score is quite good. And mentally, you can sort of work with them a little bit easier because technically they're not struggling as much. With the technical side, you can concentrate more. Um, but yeah, that's really good. So number one tip, would you just say, turn up to depot, just physically prepared? Physically prepared, 100%. You, so first and foremost is know full well that this is going to be extremely hard. You've got to be fully in. You have to fully commit to that because if you don't, then you're going to go to another unit. Plain and simple. Then you need to be so physically prepared that we can rely on mindset later. And even, even more so, the same can be said about Sandhurst as well. So my, my thinking whenever I, whenever I coach people going to the um, academy at Sandhurst is that you need the ability to think. People are relying on your ability to think. What, what they don't tell you is that they're going to put you under physical fatigue throughout that and then ask you to think. That's a very difficult thing. If you're hanging out your ass, if you're if your heart rate's at fucking 300, then you and then you can't you can't possibly think very straight. And you rely and people are relying on you to think and lead people. So you have to be so physically robust that you give yourself breathing space. When you get to checkpoint, wherever you need to go, that you calm, your heart rate's down, you, your muscles aren't aching. You have the ability to sort your own self out and sort everyone else out around you because. That's what you're relied to do on as a leader in Sanders and especially post Sanders. Yeah. So again, it comes back down to physical health. So with that, then uh, it's another. Uh, it is a what again. I'll sort of go off what I've seen on your story and um, questions I get. I'd love to hear your answer on this. Is people turn around and go, "Oh, so how physical prepared do I need?" And the common one is, "Oh, how fast do I need to run a five k?" Um, yeah. I think I know what you're going to say with this. But when you're telling people to be physically prepared, we just stick with. Depot for you, um, paratroopers, because it's pretty much similar, but that's sort of the highest someone needs to be. So you're, what would your answer be to that then? Someone messaged you and goes, okay, how physically prepared do I need to be? How fast do I need to run a 5K or how fast do I need to run minute miles? What would you turn around to them about and say that? Um, well, first and, for, well, first and foremost, Depot is very progressive. You do not have to turn up being at P company standard or you don't have to turn up, let's say, at week 12 standard where we're running... Uh, seven thirty minute miles going out for a run you don't have to be at that standard at week one day one now what i will say is that the fitter you are the better minute miles you can run that the less gap you have to close in 12 weeks to get to that seven thirty minute miles whatever it is is so it's there isn't there isn't a a number i can put on a back score or a minute mile i can put running a six mile run or you know how many minutes it's going to take to 5k there isn't anything like that. I've seen people pass depot running, you know, 23 minute 5Ks. I've seen people fail depot running 16 minute 5Ks. So that now those those benchmarks I've just told you is 
people always come up with those because that forms part of my testing. So whenever I test someone, I always test for every component of fitness to understand what they need, understand what they're great at, and I hold on to that. And then understand what they adep- what they have adept in, and I bring that up to scratch. What I'm not doing is I'm not looking for a, the magic number within that. I don't test though. I don't test someone's back squat on five kilometers to go right. I need to hit that number in order for them to be successful on selection, or prior to them going to Sanders or going to depot or whether they're going on the all arms commando course, there isn't a number I've got in my head where I'm going, we have to hit that. Now, don't get me wrong. When people are lifting certain amounts of weight very well, plus they're running extremely quickly for tests, such as the five kilometer or another test to do is a five minute best effort. Um, you know, you can almost build a pitch then and go, they're going to be okay. But first we go through that same chain I've mentioned before. The first thing we need to do is ensure that we don't get injured primary concern for me straight away is we stay the course because then we have a hundred percent more chance of passing than if we get injured and come off the course so we may as well stay the course let's ensure that under no circumstances we break then we look at what it takes to now pass the course then in future we look at what it takes to win the course but it has to go through that same pathway we stay the course now if we turn up with a a decent standard, a week one, day one depot. The instructors, I, I can speak on behalf of the parachute regiment, are incredibly gifted at what they do. They're so, so good. The best in the world, you know, across the British Army, you've got the best instructors in the world. Um, and that's everyone in the British Army. So as long as you provide those instructors a foundation for them to build upon, you will be absolutely fine. And that doesn't mean you got, doesn't mean you have to run sub 16 minute 5Ks or hit 1,600 metres on a five-minute best effort, or deadlift 200 kg. It doesn't mean that. There's no magic number. It just means that you need to ensure that you have the ability to move well, often, and be as strong as you possibly can in every component of fitness across the board to provide those instructors a foundation to build you. Because you have a long time. You go to Sanders, they've got one year to mould you. Now, I'm not saying Sanders have got the best physical training programme, because they've not. But it's one year is an awful long time to get fit, you know. And that's not to say don't turn up, don't turn up unfit. Please don't do that, you know. But the better you turn up, the better foundation you've got to mould you, and you can go even further then. Um, but there's no magic number, and people ask me that all the time. What do I need to do? What do I need to lift? And as soon as I test them on week one day one, like, what are you looking for? And I'm not. I'm just providing a benchmark in order to work in percentages to train them effectively to be as good as they possibly can. I want to hit everybody's biological tipping point because everyone's different. Everyone will start training differently. If I was to send 100 people to Pyrex Depot, I wouldn't have all of them back squatting 150, deadlifting 200, running exactly 18-minute 5Ks. It's just not possible. Everyone's different. Limbs are at different lengths. Lungs can hold different capacities. Blood pumps blood at different rates. It's Everything is complete. We are all biologically different and therefore our pathways to get to wherever will be different. So, and we have to understand that um, it's biological variance. So what we have, so we train people differently and people start differently. So it's just trying to get everything in order, be as strong as you possibly can run as fast as you possibly can for as long as you possibly can. That's the goal. The goal is to be good at absolutely everything because that's what a tactical athlete needs in the future. You will be reliant upon a single component of fitness or multiple components of fitness at any given time. And you haven't got a clue where that's going to be. As a soldier, you have no idea what's over that next hill. You have no idea what's behind that next door. No idea. So you have to have everything in the locker to rely on anything at any given time. And we both know that from, from where we've been in the world. It's, you haven't got a clue what's coming next. So you need everything. Yeah, definitely. No, that's really good. It's Yeah, just concentrating on what the initial tests are, what's going to be going on through training, and just get your best stat, all of that, before you join um, yeah, these magic numbers that people seem to think it's sort of like similar to, oh, what do I need to do to lose weight? Where, where's the magic shape? Where's the magic pill? There is no magic numbers, no magic pill. It's just do the best that you can and turn up best prepared. And the army's got these small benchmarks, haven't they? They've got for the paris, you have to run two kilometers in 815. There's your benchmark. Yeah. Run sub that, but leave yourself enough time in the bank because you're going to be reliant on running 815, but that's not going to be fresh, especially in depot. There's things that's going to happen left and right of that, where first of all, you've got to get to the start line. You've got the night before. You've got whatever session you've got. You might, 
you might have had three hours on the drill square, followed by an NBC lesson for CBRN, should I say, followed by, I don't know, whatever it is, but yeah. and then you're going to have to run. So you need time in the lap bank. So if you can give yourself 30 seconds, so if you can run it in 7.45, you know you've got 30 seconds of something else coming in and tiring you out. You've still got 30 seconds in the bank to come in under time. The bigger that gap can be, the, you know, the more in the bank you've got. So if you can run a sub seven, you know, whatever they throw at you, you've still got a minute 15 to rely on. There's still a lot in the bank. So you can do whatever they want to in the corridor. You can have whatever session you want prior. It's, you know, you've still got a minute 15 to, to left in the tank. But yeah. if you're hitting 815 fresh, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, that's really good. And I love what you say about this as well, is do as little as possible. So many people are trying to do eight, nine, ten sessions a day doing double sessions. Um, yeah. And I know you're big on, sometimes you only have to do three. If that works around your lifestyle and you're still working towards your goal, then I only do three sessions a day. Um, yeah. So once again, it all comes down, doesn't it, to um, just staying injury free. Yeah, it's the minimal minimal effect, though. It's, 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 if you boil a kettle, it gets to a certain degree. If you keep boiling that kettle, it doesn't get any hotter. It just evaporates. It just water just disappears. You know, it's it it starts it as a negative effect. Sustained performance is about doing as as little as you possibly can, but to get the biggest bang for your buck. Now, in order to do that, you've got to get extremely specific in your training. Now, there's not many people who can do that in the world. Is everyone knows the one RM back squat? So, in order to improve strength, we can work at plus eighty four percent, and you'll improve strength at what UK SCA determined between two and five reps for between three and five sets at this tempo with between 180 and 300 seconds rest. These things are really simple if we know that. But do we know that for every single limb in the body? Can we train that in a specific way that whereby we go, we're going to do exactly this and only this and we're going to walk away and rest? Because we don't grow in, we do grow in stress mentally, but our bodies doesn't. We grow in rest. That's where that's where growth comes. It's but it's the rest after the stress. So it's you know it's it's very very difficult to do the minimal because you have to be very accurate in what you do. Yeah. But that's the idea. Do as little as you possibly can to get the biggest bang for your buck. No, that's wicked. Um, really like that point. I just want to move on to a little bit um, about your career, and then we'll come back to present and future because that's what I really want to talk about with you, and I know you want to talk about that. Um, because you've got some really good things going on in your life and you've got some good things planned. Um, just talking about parachute regiment, because you was two para originally, wasn't you? And then you transferred yeah. to one para SFSG. So just for like the viewers, how did that sort of work and how can people aspire to do that if they end up in one of the battalions and they want to transition across? Yeah, so, but, um, you know, back when I finished depot, it was a case of, it was, it was basically, it was... Um, we was all got called out into cor into the corridor, and you know there was so uh, a little bit more perspective about the sixty odd who started. There was nine originals. We then had oh, some yeah. um, some back squatters, and we we you know so we upped the numbers a little bit. Basically, all got into the corridor, and it was a case of right. You five are going to one para. You five are going to two para. You five are going to three para. All right, sound. Oh, some, okay. uh, I had a mate, I had one of my best mates, had a brother in two Paris, so we wanted to be there with him. So there was there was things that happened, but it's it comes down to where you're needed. Um now, because where the commitment is, everyone's going to two and three para. And then over time, what you do is you go over to one para. So when you get over to one para, um, you basically go and do your specialist operator carder and and then yeah, you you, you just transition in because it's a whole new uh, weapon systems, new drills. It's it's a it's a basically a different world. So when I went over though, it wasn't a case of that I, I wanted to. Again, it was I got called to the office on a Tuesday night, absolutely randomly, told a text message saying come up to the office. By the time I got up to the office, um, when I spoke to the boss, uh, Sergeant Major, it wasn't. He was just like, uh, right, you're going to one para tomorrow morning. You've been uh, transferred over to one para, and I was like, sounds. He was like, yeah. All your boxes are by your door. Go and pack your kit from your room. Um, vehicle leaves for SFSG tomorrow morning. I was like, all right, why? He was like, because you need one person from support company needs to go. Um, it's you because you... It's, it's going to be you. And I was like, sad. Um, 
And yeah, by the time I got back to my door, my WhatsApp group was going off. My, every single picture I had, my eyes had been blacked out and my uh, Paris engagement <laughs> badge had been taken off and coloured in with one power and I was getting the piss taken out of me. And that was it. I was on the road the following morning, turned up to one power and that was me. I was in, done. Um, and yeah, <laughs> very, very simple, mate. It's, it's, it's not a case of you need to do anything differently. It's that they direct teams that special force support have enough in the bank from parachute regiment depot which is very very humbling it's a very nice thing that you know what you've gone through is good enough to be in that role so it's um it's decent that's good um oh, that's brilliant so going on from there then we're, we're sort of getting to present day then how did you end up doing ptis going to cat and then ended up in the pt club so my um i was quite ill when i went to one para um i needed various operations Fortunately, though, I was in one power and I've got like now the world's best rehab facilities because obviously I'm using SF. So it was um, it was really, really good for me. So it was actually worked out incredibly well. When I got over there about a year later, I ended up with these operations, spent so many days in um, Selly Oak in John Birmingham's hospital. Yeah, uh, yeah. And in the end, it was, you know, one power is uh, the the camp's like a graveyard, mate, because everyone's on shift, everyone's on different rotations, so no one, you didn't, never see anybody. Um, okay. So if you get sort of just out of that rotation, you're in no man's land, and it was just like, I just got back from Afghan with two para the, the year before, and one of my bosses was over there as well, who tra- who got transferred over there, and it was just like, I just said to him, listen, if 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 I, can you deploy me or not? And he was like, at this moment in time, we can't, because... Um, I was too soon out of an op. And he, I was like, okay, well, if I'm not deploying right now, send me back to two para. Uh, so I won't deploy. At least I can fucking talk to someone in the scoff house. Do you know what I mean? Because I, at the moment, I'm just like, I'm in no man's land here. So at least if I'm not, bring me back whenever I can. And he was like, okay, we'll see what we can do. Anyway, I managed to get back into two para. Um, and then, and then that was me. Then I, it was then pushing. That was in like 2000 and, I don't know when that was, 2012 maybe. Then fast forward into 2014, back in two power and I wanted to go on UKSF selection. And um, long story short, got pulled off selection to go. I didn't even start, but I got taken off the start state to basically go and be a 2IC in the jungle for the Paris. And I kicked off that hard that I ended up sent up to <laughs> sent up to depot to be a PTI. Um and I was like, okay, so I went up to depot and I thought, right, I'm not sitting still for two years. Um, all like everyone around me would be getting promoted and doing this. I was very, very, very green at this point. Like all I wanted to do was be a paratrooper. I was yeah. so keen; it was unbelievable. So I'm not sitting still. So just enrolled on a degree. Literally sat there on one night on my laptop and thought, right, I'm going fully in here. If I'm going to be a PTI for two years, I want to be the best PTI. Um, same as what I did when I was in back in doing the green stuff I wanted to be the best soldier at all costs so I enrolled on to a degree and it was a three year full time affiliated to Preston I was like yep sign me up full I, literally I was as if I was fully in uni um, the army didn't even know I'd sat join uni uni didn't know I was in the army and just thought fuck it run at that how, how hard can it be again and uh, so yeah that uh, so the, every for two years in Catrick uh, as a PTI, I basically studied as hard as I possibly could every single night, binned every sort of external thing that could possibly influence me. No telly, Xbox, place all that type of stuff. Went I had absolutely nothing in my room but a bed and a laptop and a shitload of books that I studied on every single night. And the following day, I implemented theory into practice, and I did that for two years straight you know uh, studied all night every night and then trained you know best part of 200 people every day um and yeah that's 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 the level i went to in order to be the best and um ended up going on pt course selection my mum got ill and i turned up to pt course selection very very unprepared um i literally have between you know four and six months i think i had off uh going back to the original reason why I started the army was that, you know, there was no one to look after my little sister. I basically went and did that and yeah. looked after her. 
sat by my mum's bed for between four and six months. And the person who gave me that time off to do that was from the PT club. Okay. And um, I held that really highly and I held him in really high regard. And I thought that's, you no, know, I love that. I, I really, I appreciate it so much. Completely forgot though. I was on, so sele- I'd been put myself forward for selection in the January. So got to around about December and got a phone call saying, you know, how's your mum first and foremost, which again, I appreciated. And then it was like, are you ready for selection? And I was like, no. And he was like, well, you're still on it. Do you want to go? And I was like, yeah, fuck it. How hard can it be? <laughs> and uh, that's a story of my life at the moment, isn't it? So anyway, this. so I got to like January, uh, rang my mate who was an instructor up there, who's ex-Power Edge. I basically took his spot as a PTI in Depot. So I knew him and rang him up. was like, mate, I'm coming up on Sunday. What do I need? This was on like the Friday. And he's like, right, well, just turn up on Sunday with, in your mufti. And we're good to go. And I was like, what's Mufti? And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, yeah. He started reeling off this kit list. Mufti's basically a really shit suit that literally only the army will have. It's got buttons in certain places. And I need a parachute regiment badge on a blazer and a certain colour set of trousers and a certain type of shoe. And I was just like, mate, I have not got any of that. Beg, okay. borrow and steal from everyone. Turn yeah. up on Sunday, looking like a bag of shit. With absolutely zero preparation, Next to nothing on the kit list, all my books and all sorts were all over the shop. I hadn't done any fitness for like four months, six months nearly. All I'd done was study because next to my mum, all I was still going through uni. I thought, right, I can't miss these. I've still got marks to hit, still got timelines to hit in uni. So they're really expecting like, you know, assignments and stuff. So fortunately, I turned up with a shitload of knowledge on the body um, and just bluffed my way through that way. And it, I realized very, very early then that in this world, in the physical training world, as long as you understand the body to an nth degree, as long as you understand everything within it and how it works, everything else is easy. Training people just becomes so much easier when you understand the intrinsic works of the body. It's so, so simple. So there, I just bluffed my way through because no one had the physical, the, the, the anatomy and physiology knowledge that I had on the body. So whenever someone came up with something physically Whenever the, the, the talk or the, or the questions were on military stuff, I could, we're in a physical world. I just reverted back to the body. Well, okay, well, that means that for the body. And someone straight away is like, okay, so not only does he understand the military concept, he understands the, what's happening with the body. Didn't understand the military. I bridged it and just, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, yeah, that means this, this. And he was like, okay. But I somehow managed to get myself through there. Um, and then, yeah, and then I was just like, went and started. So from, from that selection process, you then pass or fail. And if you pass, you go on to a, your class one course, which is just shy of a year long. And I went on that. And that was my, oh, at the same time I was going on that, was also my final year of uni. Um, that was horrendous. That was not recommended for anyone. That was like, you know, the final year of uni, plus going on, on class one course where you've got another degree to do. You've got... Every, every sporting and, and adventure training course you can possibly think of to do. And there's so much homework and so much like, there's so much stuff that you've got to do on the class one course anyway. Um, and it's even harder now. Um, you know, what, what what that course looks like now is even more demanding, but it's, it's more my street, it's more about the body now, which is good. Back then, man, it was so hard. And again, every single night I was trying to get through my work I had to do for PT core for the following morning. And then I was up till one, two, three, sometimes all night st- do, getting my uni work boxed off. And it was just, it was really hard, man. I, I literally just got married. I had, was building a house. It was, my mum had now at this point was really on a downward spiral. Um, I, everything was just a whoa, Everything was against me. And I was just like, I, I'm not, the easiest thing to do would just be, right, well, either just go back to the parish, just leave PT Corps, because I can't do that at the same time as everything else or just not go home for a year and have that family life and just ignore the house for a little bit. My missus moved back in. My missus was staying with my dad. or sack uni. And I was like, there's nothing within this that I'm willing to give up. I've come so far with everything. I'm holding on to it. And I did. I thought it's one year. Put yourself in the locker and get it done. And, um, and it did, but I come out that other end with so much knowledge that I was just like, I was just raring to go. I, I would literally run anything. Like I wanted, just wanted to be the best PTI I could be. 
And um, it was a really difficult, that was probably one of the most toughest years I've ever had. But the end product, the byproduct of it was incredible. Um, and there's not much now that I ever do or have done before it that I think, oh, this is going to be too hard. Because I've never bitten off too much where I was so close to basically just caving in on everything. At so many times, I thought I'd bit up far too much to make and chew here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's how I ended up just straight away. Um, I'd done quite well on that course. So I got some awards and got my own unit straight off the back of it. Uh, went over to the engineers in Chilwell, built some processes there and built some programs where increased pass rates to the highest they've been and decreased injury rates to the lowest they've ever been. And then got asked to go and do it at Harrogate. Did the same there. Um, and then got asked to do it for the army and did the same there and just um, things just things just kept going mate It's and it all comes back to understanding the body and everything else was simple mate that's when you say like that like I didn't I didn't know it was that in depth I knew you had done degrees and stuff and PT call that's like do you reckon like depot being a power trooper and then obviously I'm guessing your, your wife's pretty understanding um, helped you know, was she ever like sort of putting pressure on you or do you reckon what you learned through depot and growing through the army? Because I think military mindset does help you with stuff like that. That sort of like, you don't really want to quit attitude, do you? You want to do everything to the best of your ability and you're definitely one of them. Would you say that have helped? Do you reckon if your missus was a little bit less understanding? And oh, 100%. So what that, that, that in a coaching context is known as your um, psychosocial element. So we have physiological, psychological and psychosocial. These are three constructs that I have where they come up to be to build this whole process of coaching athlete. Physically, we spoke about. Psychologically, you've got to want it, or you ain't going to go there. But psychosocially, your support team is what I call them, is that if they're not on board, it's not going to happen. So you've got these, go back to that 25-year-old joining the Paris. You're going to be away for a long time. You're not going to have any sort of contact out of, out of that. And it's like, if your wife and your kids aren't on board with that, you're going to struggle because by the time you do get to talk to them, they're going to be going, I've not spoke to you. I've got this. I've got that. The kids are playing up. The house is this. Something's leaking. And when are you coming home? You know, I've not spoke to you so much. What Bills are coming and whatever. It's like, you just don't need that shit. Now, I had, I didn't have any of that, obviously, at 17. I'd, every every ounce of my wage I had, basically, I didn't go home at all. I just left my little sister with my mum, which was, I had to do it. My my mum was an out, re, alcoholic. She basically had no control over anything. But, and all I would do was send my full wage that I got every single month back to my family and stay put exactly where I was because I thought that was better than me coming home with money because it was going to cost money to get home. I'd want to go with my mates and all that. So I just cleared it all out, sent every bit of money home. So I had no... I wasn't like that 25-year-old. I've got all these external influences trying to, you know, he's got life, he's got... X amount, you know, so you've got to be fully on, and it's, especially when you think about these boys going on UKSF selection, if that psychosocial, if that support team isn't in place, especially with COVID at the moment, where there's no contact out, you can't leave camp for X amount of time. It's like, you've got to have that shit in order or it's not going to happen. Um, so yeah, my my wife now has spent the majority of my career with me and it's it's, I realized when I, when I first left and came home and it was during the height of COVID and I was like, I literally had spent, especially in the Paris, three weeks out of the four weeks away. You know, you're all, you're away a lot, a lot of the time. It was like, all of a sudden I'm home every day, all day. I have, I've got a, a new little girl and I was just like, oh my God, I need to get out of this environment. I need my own office, which is where I am now. And it was yeah. just like, get me out of this. I need my own space. I've spent, I've, my whole life has been on my own. I was just like, I need that. I need that little bit of space. Now, don't get me wrong. I love being around friends and family and stuff. But when it comes to like work and when you're in that all the time, I was just like, I need to, I need a little bit of breathing space here. Um, but yeah, she is and has been fully on board for everything. Um, and she knows as well that when something's in my mind, just leave me to it. Cause I'm going to be running at that whole heart. And I will, I will, I will completely fuck everything else off around me. I'll cut people out of my life. I'm ruthless with it. To go and get what I to go and get what I need and what I want in order to provide something for everybody. I have a very small clique of family and friends, and everything I do is is driven around supporting them. Um, my little sisters, you know, my mum has passed away a couple of years ago, yeah. um, and you know, and still feel quite a bit of a big responsibility for my little sister, yeah. who's now got a master's in linguistics. 
um, mm. another degree in something else. And she, so we did all right. Do you know what I mean? We get, it, everything I did came came full circle, and she's doing really well now. Um, so it's, but I still feel that pressure to support everybody, and I need to support from other people in order for me to do that. My wife's first and front and center in doing that, and just going, just leave him to it because he is. He won't want to know anybody. Let him let him just run at that. It's paid off though. Look at you. Um, you give up pretty much a couple of years of your life. And I know you, like you said, you still do it now, but you've got that work life balance by the looks of it. You've got your own office. Yeah, you're at home, you're looking after your daughter this morning before you've come on this. Um, so yeah, sometimes I think people just need to understand, like try not to live in the moment and just think about the future. Um sacrifice what you're doing. Um but yeah, let's talk about that. This is actually what I want to really speak to you about. And I know you want to get out there. So you're the secret coach. We haven't actually mentioned that yet. You train um, some highly skilled professionals from around the world and you've just released an app. You're like the sock ninja, which I can vouch for. Um, definitely need to get my hands on some more of them. But yeah, let's let's just dive, dive into all of that now. I really want to know how's the app going? What's, what's people's thoughts on it and where's it going to go? And like... Yeah. Can you talk about, I know you bring up sort of working with the army still and where that training is going. Is, are you any more getting your app and sort of, I, I don't want to talk too much. I'll let you do it because I don't know what you're releasing and what you're not. I know we spoke a little bit about it. Yeah, so um, I, I, I have a couple of companies now whereby um, front and centre is my coaching. So I as I mentioned at the start is I coach some, and this is personal, completely online, personal coaching. It's one, it's, it's one-to-one direct access to me. Um, and that is probably the most specific program you can get on the market, whereby it's, it's so in depth. I go to absolutely every inch of the world to try and get the best possible pass pathway to understand where you are now and where you want to be. Um, and it works. Um, and that could be there are people from all over the world, um, New York firefighters, South African anti-poachers, Australian specialist police. We've got special forces from all over the world and whatever it is, is, is the crazier the aim, the more I'm on board with. So when people from like, you know, Spanish police or Belgian special forces come to me and say like, I want that. I'm here and now I want to be there. I'm like, I'm in. What does that involve? What does that test involve? What do you need to be in order to get there? And I'm like, let's go, I'm in. And um, so the crazier the aim, the better for that. Now, what that had though is that I, because it's so specific and it takes a shitload of my time, like a, a lot of my time, like 90% of my work time is based around these people, is um, I was turning down so many people. So when I left the army, that year I looked and I turned down around about 300 people. Wow. Now, from a business standpoint, that is very poor, very, very poor. It was just like, but from a moral standpoint, I hated the thought that I couldn't help these people. I had no, I had no second tier. It was, it was, it's this or nothing. And it was awful. And I was just like, well, how can I do it? So I ended up coming up with like challenges and minimal fitness programs and tried all these concepts whereby I could just try and get people on board with a very basic, still extremely individualized training, utilizing algorithms to understand metrics around the body and taking testing and working in percentage, exactly the same as what I'm doing with these athletes. The only difference is it was that it was so cost effective and it, because it was less interaction and intervention for myself. So intervention with my OPC, my tier one stuff now is so quick and fluid that as soon as your dynamic changes, any wherever you could, most of the people I, I have deploy all over the world at a day's notice, everything changes. I will take, I'll strip everything down and recreate the programs in order to now accommodate wherever they are in the world. Or if they got going to have no comms for six weeks, then they'll have something in place for six weeks where it's going to be, we think we're going to have this. So I'm going to build that. But if you haven't got it, I've got this in place for you, mate, and that in place. And if you just so happen to have a kettlebell, then there's your program for that to accommodate that. Everything's done so specifically to suit them in order to continue grow, growing to get to that aim. Now, I couldn't do that for 300 people. Um, so I come up with all these concepts, built shitloads of algorithms, created challenges, and it really, really worked really well. I built this like um, something I've never done before. So obviously, you mentioned it before about the secret coach. I never talk about 
any athlete that I ever take on. Um, and I work with some pretty big names. So again, it's really poor from a business standpoint. It's, really, it's like, if I could just come out and say, oh, by the way, I work with this guy and I've got this guy to this place or this guy is now in this, just winning this sporting medal or whatever it is. It's, it's, if I could do that, <laughs> I'd probably be doing a lot better. But I can't, I, I, I blanket it because originally, you know, a lot of people was from a special forces background whereby I just thought I can never get caught out by it. I can't talk about one person over here and this person over there. I thought, right, just blanket it. And I ran with it and called it the secret athlete. Whatever we do, we don't talk about it. So whoever I'm working with, it's between us. It's, and people love that because I'm not marketing them for my next client. It is basically, it's me and you are in on this aim and we're going to go achieve that aim. The best thing in the world I get, and it really, it really, I love it, is when someone gets over the hills and selection and I just get a text message saying I'm in. I've done it. I fuck it. I love it so much. It, it's like no one needs to see that. Yeah. I could. I would love to put that on Instagram on a story, and it would blow up, and I'd probably get another five thousand people. Whereby another five hundred people would want a program, where another fifty people from that one percent would say, "I'll pay you this X amount of money." And you know, it'd be really good for growth and business. It'd be really good to like show people that I actually know what I'm talking about, but I don't, um, and I won't. So the challenges work really well, but on top of that, I managed to get feedback. I was managed to put people in a group whereby these weren't going on these crazy aims and whatever they're going to do. So I got them on and I said, right, here's what we'll do. We'll put you into a Facebook group and I want you to all help each other out because everyone's on different pathways. Everyone's program's all different, but if someone's running one mile or four miles, it doesn't matter. You're in there together and you say, right, we're going to do this together or support each other. And I, I created this support system. It's something I've never done before. And it works so well. I was like, right, build an app um, and help more people. And I did. And it uh, it went crazy straight away. Um, 70,000 health and fitness apps were built in 2020 alone. So <laughs> never mind how many there is. So never mind how many there is in the world right now. It was 2020 alone. Um, within 24 hours, my app was in the top 100 in the world. And it was crazy. And it was it was because it was so quick, because so many people download it so quick. And there's like 1,300 downloads now, which is I'm so, so humbled by. Um, and I just want to, I just, and the more people that go on it, the better the data becomes, the closer the, and more accurate the program will become. And it's all, I'm a very data-driven coach. Everything is, is built around science, truth. There's no guessing. If you can lift that, then there's no point in me prescribing anything more than that because it's not going to happen. Yeah. If you can only, if if you can only walk five kilometers, then there's absolutely no point. And you see these ebooks, tactical ebooks, all over the all over the place where it's like, I can't run a five kilometer, but I want to join the army. I can't. I've never run a mile before. Week one, day one, it's like, yeah, you're going to do three miles carrying eighteen kg. And it's like, well, hang on a minute, it's. <laughs> And that's because they're all generic and where I thought I, I can't do that. That's why I turned down those 300 people. I couldn't possibly build this. And then I built this way whereby I joined up teams with um, an elite sports technology. So basically work with like uh, NFL teams, NBA, Premier League teams, these sports analysis, all that type of stuff where they'll say, you know, it's and it's all basically what I do for the military, but from a sporting context. So we joined teams and we created this outrageous app mate where it's just like it's now considered as artificial intelligence where it's machine learning it understands you and the more you put into it the more it understands the more it gives back out it considers how well you slept you know how stressed you are with the kids it asks you simple questions whereby every answer determines what happens in your program um your current ability is considered massively against i don't know what um How's your day going? Simple questions like that. So it's, it's, and it, the outcome has been unbelievable. People are like, because you're training specifically and people, and, and a lot of people don't quite understand this. Now, people from a lower training age is really simple, but when you're like doubling people's deadlifts and people's five kilometer times are coming down from 32 minutes to 22 minutes, that's big. And it's, and when you can put that into a package and you can package that and say, 
look what we can do. And we can do that for everybody because it's just specific training. You know, it's an incredible thing that you've got hold of. And, and, and my shittest part of my whole business model is marketing, believe it or not. Although everything's come from Instagram and people from the outset would look and say, Instagram's doing well, 40 odd thousand followers and whatever it's, my marketing is so poor and it, it's poor because I, I, I'm, I, my hands are tied for how much I can sell. I hate selling someone to create the business model to create, to get someone else in. So my marketing is really, really poor. We've, we've got the technology and the knowledge now to make every single person in the British Army grow to that biological tipping point. I have that ability to do that right now. What I don't have is the marketing expertise to go and ensure that the, the, the Army has no choice but to take that on. I haven't got that in the bag. All I can say is, yeah, I'm an S&C coach. I've got a degree in coaching. I used to be a para. That's all I've got, and it gets old. Um, but if I had the ability to go and basically sell what I can do, I'd love nothing more than to help everybody. I'd love nothing more than to take more and more people. And that's not that app. I have a different app that, that's designed for that. Um, and that's what I want to do. I want to help as many people as I possibly can. I genuinely, genuinely do. Um, the OPC is doing well enough where it gives me that breathing space in order to, to comfortably say that. And that's, that's all I want to do in this life, mate, is just make people so physically prepared for absolutely anything. And I'll do anything to do that. And the app's there. The Red On Challenge is there for absolutely anyone to download. Doesn't matter whether you're a tactical athlete or not. The concept of training like a tactical athlete is going back to that original point of being ready for absolutely anything. It understands strengths and weaknesses. And it builds packages in order to capitalize those weaknesses and make them grow as quickly as possibly can, utilizing that minimal effect dose like we mentioned earlier. Minimal training, but it gives you the biggest bang for your buck right now for depending on how well you slept or what your current ability is. It gives you that exact pathway. And it's an incredible tool. And the results from it are unbelievable. Mate, that's insane. Yeah, I've actually downloaded it. I'm not someone I've literally been so busy. I've just literally um, pretty much just left the army. So I've been concentrating on that. Um, but I'm going to be signing up. It's on my phone. Uh, and I've been in your group. I've done one of your programs. I can vouch for that. And what I love about it, though, because I'm, I'm quite competitive, but it needs to be in a good day. Um, I didn't know it was artificial intelligence, which is absolutely insane. Um, it, I didn't realise it programmed and adapted to you. But I like the... Um, scores you out of everyone else on the app doesn't it um let yeah. you know what, what ability you're at and so you can sort of you don't you don't want to chase your own ego and you want to be careful but it does give you that little bit extra marker like why well, i'm 35 i want to be now 34 you know don't worry about number one or that's what i did yeah. like about you it just sort of made you that little bit more competitive because you know you're, you're up against other people even though you should only yeah. be going against yourself if that makes sense well look the outline is still very simple it's you v you and you want yeah. to be better than what you was yesterday. So you put absolutely everything in today in order to be better tomorrow. That concept, not gone. What I have done, though, is what some people like is the competitive nature of it. So the app now, wait, I'm, I'm so excited for you to go and see, because I know you was on one of the original challenge, but I, I yeah. inputted all that myself. I basically wrote all that myself in order to provide you that leaderboard and say, by the way, mate, you are fifth out of, X amount of people on the on this challenge. Um, and you've gone up by seven spaces because your percent of back squats rose by this much, where your five kilometers come this much. However, you've dropped down a space in there because such and such has grown a bit faster than you. In my head, I'm going, who's that guy? Because we don't know any. Because one thing I've, I've ensured is that the same thing applies where it's confidential. So yeah. if you don't want your name to be mentioned, it won't be mentioned. So it just tells you a number of where you are. But what's incredible now, mate, is that you can go and find out where you are in your county and you can break everything down into your country, around the world. And now, it, it, and what over time, what we'll do is we'll start adding competition in whereby we'll have UK v USA and we'll, we'll, we'll throw stuff in there and say, you know, like great, you're fifth out of 100 for your back squat. But in the UK and you're seventh out of 120 in the US, uh, in the world, but you're 75 fifth for your five kilometer best effort. So it means your cardio is not as great. So what the app's going to do is it's going to go, right, I need to hold that position of fifth. Not only do I want to hold it, I want fourth. So I'm going to grow a little bit here, but most of my effort is going to come over here because there's no way I'm happy with 75th. 
And the app does that for you. It goes, fucking hold on to your seatbelts, mate, because we're going to grow over here. And it goes like, and it goes, and it'll drive you and it, it will showcase how quickly you're going towards that. And it'll say, right. And then when you retest, it goes, right, now you're 50th. Well, I'm not happy with that. I want more. And it goes, oh, I'm, but we've grown one over here. Goes, I'm not happy over here. I'm still 50th. I want 40th minimum. And it does that and it makes you grow and grow and grow. And you can always keep an eye on it. And, but the crazy, the best thing about it is, and, the, and we've done it this way, is that whilst you're in your programme, you can't retest. It wants you to retest at a certain amount of time because we've, we've basically calculated that the your physical ability will change very quickly, depending on your training age, so depending on how soon you test. But for the majority of people, your physical ability, especially when you're training specifically, will change within about four to six weeks. So when you're training outside of that six weeks, so these eight-week PDF programs, two weeks remaining is a guess if you prescribed accurately in the first six. The last two weeks, to two to four weeks, is a complete guess because your whole physical, if your training program is that good in the four to six weeks, the last four to two weeks should be irrelevant because yeah. your body has changed. That's what the app's telling you, right? We've changed now. So now we need to retest in order to realign exactly what our pathway looks like. Because not only has your um, timelines now changed because it's got shorter because we've trained for four weeks, your physical ability should have gone up. I'm not confident in my program and your physical ability has gone up. Therefore, the percentages and the numbers we're working at now are wrong. So we need to retest to realign the program. Whilst you're in that program, though, someone else has just signed up to the app and retested. And they're going to take your space. If they're better than you, it's going to, it's going to give you a notification to go, do you remember you was 50th? Now you're 51. Because such and such from X amount of counties just turned up. And you're going to be like, right, I'm not having that. Like, yeah. Who's this guy? And yeah, so now you're going to go chasing him. And it, it, adds, it adds another element. And it, that competition side is really, really good. Um, you don't have to utilise it. If it's you be you and you don't want to even look at it, then you don't have to. And no one will ever know that you is even on it, um, which is a, another key market that we wanted to... I wanted to ensure that I could hit everybody. I wanted to ensure that I had an app that was for absolutely everything. My OPC is a little bit elitist now. Um, yeah. I do take people on who... Some people come to me saying, I've been ill for three years. I, I just want to walk again. And I go, right, I'm sold, I'm in. But when people come to me and with aims and one of the first things I outline is is I want to know who you are where you are and where you want to be is and they come to me and they go oh, I want to join the army all right why just want to join the army nothing else all right well, what have you done so far nothing just seeing if I could just give you the money and you'll give me all the answers I just turn them down point blank yeah. not interested it's that doesn't get me going that doesn't excite me anymore it's you know I've been doing that for years training people in the army and to join the army I want something that OPC very specific but the red on challenge accounts for those people who may not need all that interactions eventually just want I, I say simple it's it's the second most effective program in the world it's for the price of a cup of coffee a week it's literally you will not get anything better yeah. in the world and I can I can confidently look, look you in the eyes and say that live on this saying that is the single best thing you can buy no, that's if wicked. That's good to hear. Um, I am, I am excited. I did really like your program. The Facebook group was good. Um, you know, I've, that's I've growing as well. You were sorry. That's growing as well, mate. Which is getting even yeah. better. And what I loved about that Facebook group, and is I've never had this before, is when someone would ask me a question on it, someone else would answer it before yeah. I'd even got in there, and I was like. Yeah. You know, someone's doing my job and people would know more than me and certain you know, I, I didn't realize you know, when I get to know them, it's, it's you know, there's doctors and there was people with you know doctorates in strength conditioning. You're like, so these people are jumping in, going, Oh, by the way, mate, that means that. Before I'd even got in there, I was like, Okay, I've learned something there, I'm happy with that. And I am like a sponge, I go and I want to know everything. And if I don't know it, I want to know it now. And I cling on to people who are much brighter than me in much better positions than me. And I want to draw every bit of knowledge from them. And I have, I've got no problems with that. There's no egos whatsoever in this, in the science world. It's, I want to know everything. And if I don't know it, I'll be the first person to go, I don't know that mate, but I will know it. Yeah. I don't know it now, but I will. Now that's good. Just going back to the, um, what I liked about it, you go back to the numbers of where you are, UVU, and you sort of touched on it. It's like, what I didn't like about myself was, I did, yeah, like you said, it was a good 5K, good 
and what else was it? It was good, five minutes. And then one of them, you was, you were lacking. So my numbers were quite good. I think I was like top 20, around the 20s. But then one of them, I was like 50-ish, 50th. And I was like, damn it, that's where my weakness is. And you can put your effort, like you said, even though you get your program and you're doing what you did, you know that actually that's my weakness and that's where I need to work on. Yeah. So it's good that the app tells you that. Um, but now, yeah, I'm looking forward to signing up again. I need to, even though, you, you know, I've got my PT call. Well, people don't understand, like, just because you're a coach or something, like you just said, don't be afraid to say, like, go and get yourself a coach. Sometimes you just want someone to hold you accountable or you don't know everything in the world. So go to someone else and listen to what they've got to say. It's nothing worse than someone thinking that they know it all. Yeah, um, I'll, t- I'll tell you a story, man. I was when I was doing some filming for the app. I was um, I went to this gym in the middle of Liverpool. You would never even know it was there, never know it existed, and it was a big bodybuilding gym. And I got I walked in, got invited. I walked into this room, and someone went, "I'll oh, come and see this." Walked into this room, and it was about the same size. Same size. I know you can't see it. It's, it's about um, fifteen foot by fifteen foot room, and in there was shelves and shelves of the biggest trophies you've ever seen in your life and it was like every single bodybuilder that's ever been ever won anything has come through this gym nice. and i was like well, why don't people know when it was like and it made they said this the concept of the secret athlete not that to that words but he was basically yeah. saying oh no one needs to know about it they come in here we get it done we get back out there's no egos whatsoever in this and i was like oh my god this, I, I absolutely love this place and anyway i was doing this exercise in this gym and this bloke come over and went, mate, why are you doing it that way? And I explained the, the anatomy behind it, the physiology behind it. I was like, oh, because this, doing this, and I want to, uh, this is what I want to achieve from it. He went, right, why don't you try this? And he put me in this other position, flexed my hips a little bit. And, and, and he was like, because you, now your, your lats are now extending to this. And um, I was like, wow. And he did this thing to me. And I was just like, and he was like, that's what that means. And he said, obviously in the bodybuilding world, we want everything to be as long and as big as possible. Yeah. And I was going, okay. I didn't know that. There's a very the the the, the concept of um, aesthetics and performance are very different. What you want, what you need to do in order to look good, is a little bit different to what you need in order to perform. Now, if you want to perform predominantly, you'll look good as well. But aesthetics isn't me. So when people come to me for like, I want to compete um, on the stage for a bodybuild, that's not me. I don't know that. Um, yeah. I found that I found that out really explicitly when I went to this gym, and I was like. God, these people know the body really well yeah. in a different mind, in a different way for me. And I thought, I really, really liked it. And I went away and I was like, um, so anyway, I rang a f- good friend of mine who's coaches bodybuilders and I, I want you to coach me. I don't want to be a bodybuilder. I still don't, I, I've never been one to try and make my body look as good as possible. Everything I've ever done is about performance. I said, but I just want to come in a few times a week and just train me in hypertrophy range. Let's do a bit of strength, you know, crossover. I like Olympic lifting. The crossover would be great. I don't want to compete or anything, but I just want you to talk to me. Everything you do, I want you to do. And I, so that's what I did because I, I thought these guys know another side to the body that I don't. So now I'm, I'm training with this um, guy called Carl Turney in, in Liverpool. Um, he owns a gym called Tear Pro. And the knowledge is incredible. And I just love the fact that it's different. It's something unusual to what I've ever been used to. And I want to know that now because I didn't know it. I was like, I need to know that. And it just gives me another another string to my bow. Yeah, definitely. They People don't think it's, uh, it's so, oh, he's just a big muscle-bound bodybuilder. They don't know anything. And then you get talking to them and you're like, gee, the stuff they start coming out with um, is, is actually really impressive. Uh, that's really good. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I think people just need to drop their egos once again. It's always down to ego, isn't it? And just yeah. listen to what people are saying. It's you, be you. Um, going on to the military side then that second app I think that's, there's, there's a major problem with this in the army we've spoke about it loads um, have you spoken to anyone in the army or like you said is it the marketing's letting you down they're not because they brought in these new RFTs which I have my thoughts on I'm 50-50 on them um, they are good they do specifically test you a little bit more i think the way they're tested is a pain in the ass at work and sometimes they're not done 100 percent correctly the scr is a little bit more specific than the pft bft whatever you want to call it but you get your results and no one i was chatting to lads at work and i was like right this is why we're doing this this is why the scr is the pti is taking your results and basically you should go away and get your own program they're like 
I don't even know my, what my results are. They just yeah. the results get taken and then entered in a, um, whatever it is on the system, and then you never see them again. And this is what you're trying to combat, isn't it? It's, with yeah, it's or strength conditioning workouts at work. It's not specific, is it? You just get in a group, roughly who's the same size as you. Are. Cool, go and lift some weights, and or we're going to do the circuits. How, how yeah. can we combat that? I know you're trying to, but it it so utilizing the SCR. The SCR is a soldier conditioning review. The idea behind that, and it, this is my area when I was in the PT course when this was being designed um, and I was what part of this team known as the brains it was about six of us we used to travel around the country upskilling people on why we're doing this and the whole idea behind it is in order to review someone's physical health let's say explosive power that we that we take lower limb explosive power that we that we get from the broad jump for example the idea behind that is in order to take a quantitative measure and put that into practice somewhere else. So create a program from it to improve lower limb explosive power. And they do that for every component across the board. That's why there's six tests in the SCR. But nothing comes from it. Absolutely nothing comes from it. And it, it drives me absolutely crazy. Again, going back to that competitive knowledge, when this first came about and I had it in Harrogate, for the permanent staff, I created a competition again. I had people competing against each other. I managed to quantify it. It's now in and put numbers on it. So everything they did, I'd have them where they would go, this guy's number one across the board. Yes, his two kilometers is not the best. Yes, his pull-ups aren't the best. Yes, his broad jump isn't the best. But effectively, because he's came second and third across everything, he's number one because he's the best at absolutely everything. Yeah. Not only did I create that comp competitive element, I then created a program from it for permanent staff. And the results, again, by the time we went, and, and again, what happened was people was buying into my program that I got from the, from the review, knowing full well that in four to six weeks' time, the SCRs, people do it yearly, your body's changing, um, knowing full well they're going to, and they're so competitive now against each other going, how's that guy number one? You know, how, how's she beating me on that? I'm going to, I'm beating her next time, watch. And they're buying into this program ready to go and retest. And it was, the byproduct of it was incredible. Now these junior soldiers look at these permanent staff working their asses off to be a better human being. They're, they're going to do the same. Nothing comes from this soldier conditioning review at the moment. Nothing. No one does anything with it. And it winds me up. And that's what my technology does. It takes on every little bit of data, soldier conditioning review, um, something I know as the TAPO test. And it basically provides this picture on someone and gives you the best possible pathway to get wherever the commander's intent determined you to be. I have the app to do that. I've got the technology to do that right now. It's good to go right now. Um, and it's just, I, I think it's, I personally think it won't, it won't come to fruition. A, because I'm ex-PT Corps and I have this strong feeling that PT Corps don't like that I've got out and done something. Um, if I'm being brutally honest, that will get me in trouble. But that's what I feel. And, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it genuinely does break my heart because I've got the ability there and it's good to go and it's being utilised in the most elite sporting teams in the world. But the army feel they've got a better version because they've got the lone soldier program, which is a load of shit. And I will go on camera and I'll go on anything. And I've said that from day one, week one. The lone soldier program was designed for people who needed help the most. Those people needed the most intervention interaction than anyone else in the military. So they gave them the most generic, shittest program in NATO and told them to run, run away with that. So now you've got the people who are at the lowest of the low, utilizing the lowest of the low program and they're expecting results and now what the now what the army are looking at doing is basically putting that into an electronic format and it's not going to yeah. do anything they do Shit. they set work mate it's just a qr code on the wall and it's like not doing pt today to so go and do the lone soldier program and you're like you can't do that i said it to you before like my mate is in the reserves um and the, the core guy or girl there just can't be asked doing pt so just 
got them all in the gym and was like, right, lone soldier program, off you yeah. go. And you're like, what, what's happened? Is like the army spent all this money. You put in the work, and I know you, a couple of um, your mates in the corps did. You went around the army, you did all this. They went to Chichester Uni, spent all this money on the RFT and SCR. And you might as well have just kept the old eight miler and BSC. You because lads just rock up to the assessments like, oh, I've got to spend all day doing the RFTs again. I've got to spend the next two hours doing an SDR. Yeah. What's the point? Where's it going with it? Um, uh, yeah, there's definitely a massive flaw. And this, listen, this isn't me digging out PT Corps because 90% of the PT Corps are incredible what they do, especially the new blokes coming through now where people are turning up now with master's degrees and, and all sorts. And, you know, the, the knowledge is incredible, uh, especially with them working with UKSCA. And they are incredible people. Um, and the, But there will always be some people who will let them down. You know, in other units, the shit people get hidden, get hid away because everyone else keeps keeps the standards up high. So they just get left in the shadows. You can't do that in the PT Corps because it's one of you in a unit of 600 people. So if you're shit, you're going to get found out really quickly. And you're gonna, you've are gonna got the ability to affect so much change because you're in charge of really really serious shit is that you get it wrong you get found out really quickly and it's so you can't hide um but there always will be shit people in every single unit that's part and parcel of what we do and that's the same in any organization around the world you walk into any tesco superstore 10 percent of the staff in there will not be pulling the weight 90 percent might be and 90 percent might be the best at what they do but 10 percent we're going to bring the team down um so it's the same in any organization it just, it just, it really does hurt me that I have the ability to, to basically improve deployability. And not only that, I can tell you why someone isn't deployable. And not only that, I can tell you when they will be ready to deploy. Yeah. And I'll give them the best possible pathway you, you can think of. And I can give a commander at every single level, every single piece of data. I can tell you who can turn left in the door the quickest, who can climb the stairs the quickest. And if we add this weapon system or this amount of ammunition at why that changed their meters per second and how that now might mean that soldier five needs to stack on the door second anything like that you can possibly think of american military and swat teams are looking at it but it's not good enough for the british army yeah do you know what do you know what we need to do mate your red on challenge app your other app needs to replace is it the hundred percent army fit and... oh my god that is i've tried do, you know what do you know what hurts me the most is that and yeah. it's really poor business again i'm a, as you can probably say i'm a really shit businessman is that people pay me a lot of money to get them ready for these courses and they shouldn't have to no it should it, they should the army should pay for it you know it's for an absolute snippet of the, the I, I can't go on record and tell you what they've done but the british army have paid so much money to this company so to build this app that turned out to be an absolute shower of shit yeah. and didn't realize at the other end that they have a, a a further fee every single year so they just sacked it i'm just sat there like oh hello i'm i've got it there for you um, I, I, I trialed that app I, I went on like different times and put in different stats and different regiments and corps i can't, can't come out with the same workout every time same six exercises, I think it was. Same set of sprints in the same run. Yeah. Nothing ever changed. Um, and nothing will change. And they can say it's individualised as much as they want, and it's not. Um, it's individualised because you put your cat badge on it. That's what's individualised about it. You change what unit you're in. Um, it's poor. And I, did, I have something that's better, that's cheaper, that's ready to go right now. And it's not just a lone soldier programme. It's basically a PDF that's been put onto a QR code I've got, I'm ready to go now. I, my problem is I haven't hired an ex general to come and work for me. Some, and so I won't. If they don't want it, I won't lose any sleep. So this app, a PT, so a PTI. Obviously, we're not. I don't want to blame the core blokes for the PTIs. I, just, I definitely think it obviously goes higher than that, and it's a lot more in depth. And then you get funding and whatever it is. So a PTI can have your app. You can take an SDR. Obviously, your commanders have the app as well. And he goes, right. I'm doing a strength and conditioning session today. Well, these exercises and it calculates everyone's numbers for them, 
same with the runs. You can have your different groups, obviously with slow, medium, fast, but we can be more specific. We're going to have a six minute mile runners group here. We're going to have a seven minute mile run group. And instead of going, put your hand up, who wants to go slow, medium, fast? You can go, right, Holman, Chadwick, you're going six minute miles, blah, blah, blah. That's what your app can do. It's basically a clerk for the PTI. So what it, originally when I've spoke about this to make, this has been, this has been backed by generals, colonels from certain regiments who want it in. Yeah. There's a core that doesn't want it in. Um, straight away, the core blokes are like, whenever I've spoke to them about this, get start flapping thinking this is going to take their job. And it's not designed to take someone's job. It's designed to enhance it. It becomes the clerk. So what I used to do was spend hours upon hours upon hours of preparing a session to ensure that it was in consideration of a, a series of sessions, which was in consideration of the whole program thing without going into like cycles and stuff. This basically helps you. If you want to do that certain session, if you want to go and improve lower limb explosive power back to the broad jump, it will, it will basically, and you can say, well, these exercises will be the best for you, mate. And if you go and pick any of these exercises, here's the right resistance for that person. So soldier one and soldier eight and soldier 12 can go in a group because they can do the same where, so we can let, I don't know, utilize a back squat session. Some people might be on 140 kg back squat. Some people might be on sit to stand because they simply can't back squat because mobility showcases that they just can't physically do it. So we need to work on that before we work on this. The app basically takes all of that guessing out for you and, ba and gives you the, the correct pathway for every single person. And it, you know, so it, it's there as a, you're a clerk. It's basically, it's there as, as, as an admin for you. Yeah. Mate, that's insane. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's get all over your marketing. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it, no, it's, it's tough for me to think about it, but it's, 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 it's there for the army. Um, listen we I, I've, I've never said this before and I don't know if I'm, I'm allowed to say it with the people I work with but it's we almost got taken on by the, the US military we got to the last day I delivered a presentation to Google in California and we got beat to the US military by Microsoft that's the level this my technology company went to and we got beat by Microsoft um, and what we realised straight away is that we bit off far too much than what we could chew. We literally went in. We got to, we got, we was going to take on a National Guard state. And what happened is the National Guard then went, we absolutely love it. We want it. We have no control over anybody. We need an arm's length. Because this would, this would be the most perfect thing for the reserves. The reserve, this would be the best thing for the reserves, whereby if you're only there for one weekend a month, we can basically give you every tool. Now, they don't have to but at least you've given the tools to be successful. And here's a training program. So when you do turn up on the weekend, we're not trying to get you fitter on that one weekend a month because that's not going to happen. We're going to make you build up to that. So on the weekend, we can actually work on what a soldier does in the technical and tactical side. We don't need to worry about fitness because we've taken care of that for you. We've given you that. If you're going to fight for queen and country, the bare minimum we can do is give you physical health. Thanks for that. There's your program. Run away with it. Um, Whatever. And on top of that, a commander can go, oh, such and such has got 100% compliance on fitness. No wonder his 5K has gone from 30 minutes to 19 minutes. He's doing really well. Do you think he'd be good for a lunch that course? Yeah, put him on. It has that ability to basically showcase everything. Whatever you can think of from a physical standpoint has the ability. Oh, X, uh, five platoon of B company are down at 30% sleep patterns. Why? Well, they've been in the field for five out of six weeks, so the sleep's been really shit. All right, maybe they need a couple of days off. So improve sleep will improve physical capacity over end. Really, really simple processes. So anyway, we had this ability to do that for the National Guard. State wanted it. They then passed it up higher to whoever owns a series of states. That series of states went, holy shit, let me see that. Right, I want you to do that for every state. Now, bearing in mind, we've got this really small company, a few developers, me and this, these elite guys who are only in football at the moment and NBA, NFL, all that type of stuff. Very stat driven sport. We're like, holy shit, what's going on here? Anyway, before we knew it, we'd gone higher and higher and higher. All of a sudden, we got offered this like US military contract. And it was like, mate, this is going to change my life. It was going to be outraged. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of millions. Wow. The musculoskeletal bone in the US is, is, was worth like 3.2 billion. 
And basically, we would say we'd wipe that. So for you to invest $2 billion, you're going to make money. Um, so anyway, it, it went crazy, man. My life was just turned upside down really quickly. I did, um, it's exclusive, by the way. No, one's ever, no, one, no one knows this. And um, I ended up delivering this presentation. I've got, I've got the shirt over there that I put on to basically sat there in like trackies and a shirt on delivering a presentation over fucking another, it was, it was like Zoom, but another one. And uh, we come out of that meeting, I was like, what has just happened? Like, has that really just happened? All these geeks sat around this table, you can see everyone on the table in Google, big Google sign in the background, crazy, all basically going in on us, more from a technical standpoint. So my, my business partner was like batting off questions. Mine was all to do with physical health. Come out of it like, Holy shit! Where like what has happened? How are we possibly here? If the, if this if the, we take this on, li- our lives are completely changed. Everything changes. And anyway, a few weeks later, we we got a f- got the phone call and said, unfortunately, been unsuccessful. Um, when we went back on to what's known as Sam's, um, where you go on, you can see who's taking the public contracts out in the US, and it was awarded to Microsoft. And we was like, how was we how was we in that league? Who, who the heck, the, Microsoft must have been going. Who the, are these guys? Like, where'd they come from? We still believe we have a better model, yeah. but we didn't have a better name. So we said, right, we need to go back over to Britain and just, just go small <laughs> early. Let's go small. So we're talking like Scottish police, the Paris and stuff like that. But we had the ability to do, that was going to take on 1 million people. The US military was happy with us to take on over a million people. The US military. We have the ability to have Britain, who's got like, you know, less than 100,000 people in the army. It's like, so we can we have that ability, 100%. And we can do that. We're ready to go, mate. Um, I've never spoken about that before. Uh, it's very rare I go on, on, on record and speak about that technology, but that is good to go. And it is the, it is outrageous. The commander admin panel, what a commander gets access to. And you can put anything in that. So if you want to add, and it can take on any, any any software as well so it can it can connect to your defense connect it can connect to the gateway and you can put your mats through that and whatever you want to do you can all go through that and everyone has access to it it's all hashed to an nth degree so one of the biggest things we had to do was basically hide everyone's data when we was going through google so so they was trying to hack us to get access to soldiers data and they couldn't do it um which we're pretty confident that way we'd be all right in britain so no one's data will ever get caught and it's just basically it just makes people grow really quickly. I mean, that's insane. Well, hopefully, mate, I generally do hope it all works out for you and it, it gets out there, not just for you, because it'll be life-changing for you, but generally, and yeah, I'm not battering the core or anything like that. Definitely, there's something that needs to change within the military when it comes to physical and mental health. Um, I feel, feel like sometimes there's people sort of going for the cheaper, yeah. sort of quicker option. So yeah, I've, it's not, I, I want to, it's for the core, I just want to help the PTIs and PT, because the PT core blokes and women, they get absolutely fresh from every angle. They're not just that their sole thing is to basically sort the program out, ensure that people are physically ready to deploy. Yeah. That's front and center what they need to do. But when they're over here and the CO's tack or they're delivering a fucking badminton comp over in Aldershot or whatever it is, you know, it takes away everything that they're really, that they're supposed to do and what they're really good at. So if I can help them do that and basically take the admin out of that get and take the guesswork out of it and say, all you need to do is ensure that's delivered to the utmost ability. And you still have complete control over the whole programming. We just provide you that little bit of extra, like what tempo someone should be working at um, for X amount of exercises, what meters per second someone can travel at for over 20 meter shuttle runs, whatever you want to do it's there to basically help you and, and just give you that little bit of admin support so you can go and develop people. That's what it's there to do. It's not there to take over anyone. It's there to support them. And it can be incredible putting those expertise with a little bit of admin support and a little bit of help from someone else who's got expertise. You know, the end product would be unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it would, it would literally change how as a military we would be able to deploy um, which is obviously a big thing with numbers dropping, deployability numbers like so- soldiers on the ground getting lower and lower, we're turning into a digital world. So those small frontline troops yeah. that you do have need to be deployable all year round. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully fingers crossed, it all works out for you. Um, 
I reckon it will. I think you're slowly getting in there, like you said, with other people. I think once you know, it's, it's all come down to name who you know, isn't it? A lot of time in life. Um, you can have the best technology in the world, but if you don't know the right people, you're not 100% trusted at the minute. And that's come down to it. And that's, you're still early in your, what, career? How long have you been out in the army now? A year, year and a half? One year, yeah. Yeah. It's, I think, I think. I've yeah. never officially, I've never officially been out. I went straight into the reserves. I've been doing things with them. But, um, I got offered like a full time contract with them, so I've I've been been working with the reserves. So it's oh, have you? nice. Yeah, well, all good. Oh, well, mate. Um, well, it's been about an hour and a half. So uh, really, yes. yeah, Sorry, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, it's been a really good chat, I'm mate. Excited. Honestly, um, we've been wanting to do this for ages. Before we go though, um, just for the viewers that don't know, where you know, what's your Instagram? Um, if you want to get your email out there, and then socks as well. People do need to go and check out your socks. <laughs> Um, where can they sock find yeah. where the sock game sock dog crazy good pair of socks um, I'll vouch yeah. for that but yeah where can people find you mate where can they get in contact with um, you get me on social media at coach Mike Chadwick and you'll find me um, or search search for that on Google You'll or, um, and then if you want to if you want to look at the challenge just type in red on challenge on any app store or type in rock app um on google and you'll find it and if you have any questions or you want any help on any physical pathways then I, i'm more than willing more than happy to answer anything and that's why i spend my life doing now is just trying to help people through social media so find me anywhere and i'll i'll do my best to help you and if i don't know it i'll definitely know someone who does mate that's awesome honestly it's been really good chat Thank you, mate. thanks it's been thanks, a pleasure mate. Uh, taking the time for coming on um Hope you enjoy the rest of your day with your family and that or whatever you're doing. Um, and I'll speak to you soon. Speak to you soon, mate. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Catch you in a bit.